Chapter 1 on becoming a sports agent and building your agency brand. Today, we're going to look at how to become a sports agent and basically looking at how to start the process of becoming registered, of becoming licensed as an agent. Right, becoming a sports agent isn't one of those occupations where you can just decide to start. All right, it is a regulated profession, one which is governed by a sporting federation. It doesn't matter what country you live in, it's the same procedure because all of those countries or sports governments are all governed by one universal body, which is known as, it could be FIFA, it could be FIBA, but there's always one universal entity that governs all the smaller federations. So it's important that you become licensed. All right. And before we actually talk about the step-by-step -step process in beginning your journey as an agent and how to get into the business, it's important that we stress two very important points before starting with the process. All right. First and foremost, if you make the decision of becoming a sports agent, it's very important. It's very crucial that you have a genuine love for sports. All right. While we are well aware that sports isn't everybody's um, interest or cup of tea. But if you do make the decision that you want to be involved in such an industry, it's important that you have some knowledge of the sporting code that you're planning on operating in. All right. Um, you have to follow sports. There are so many publications and content that is sporting content, whether it's on networks, streaming platforms, there's just, there's a lot of content out there. And you as the person with the interest of getting into the industry, you need to be able to find out how to filter and how to process that information because it can be overwhelming. All right. You need to choose where you want to consume your sporting content and stick with that because that's going to serve as your information portal. All right. There are so many portals nowadays that you can use online um, streaming platforms as well. You know, YouTube is a very good example. They have all the sporting content that you need. And then online publications such as Sports Business or Forbes or social media as well can also be helpful in giving you the latest information in terms of sport. All right. So it's very important to keep up with the current trends within the sporting entity or the sporting um, code that you plan on being an agent in. And also the next important point is education is important. It is vital to be able to get into the business as well. The minimum requirements that are required for you to be even deemed eligible by your sporting federation are that you have to at least have a high school diploma. All right. Different sporting federations have their unique criteria and set requirements. So as the person who's interested in becoming an agent, you would need to do your due diligence and do the necessary research to find out what education level you need to be able to make the application to become a sports agent. I'll give you an example. I am a registered FIFA agent. I'm a registered JFA agent in the Japan Football Association. And um, the requirements that I had to meet was I had to have at least have a high school diploma. Now, I far exceeded that because I do indeed possess a university qualification and I also uh, possess a master's degree as well postgraduate degree as well. So for me, when it came to education, I was able to tick those boxes. Now, don't let this stress you because the good news is that some sporting federations don't require a university degree. Some sporting federations, with them, it's optional. If you want to go to university and get a degree, cool, you can do that. If you don't, 
that's still fine but you must have a high school diploma or equivalent thereof to be deemed eligible okay so those are the most important things so now let's look at the step-by-step -step process on how you can get started in becoming an agent step number one you have to do your research when it comes to the sporting federation that you may be interested in a good starting point or a good tool to use in this regard is google google search there's a saying that says Google's your friend and they're not lying. Over there, you'll be able to find all the information that you need regarding the sporting federation that you may be interested in. All right. Step number two, once you found the link on Google to the sporting federation that you may be interested in, then click on that and navigate the website. While navigating the website, make sure you find the section on becoming an agent in that sport all right because that's what you're looking for step number three make sure you read the rules and regulations of that sporting federation all right this is very crucial because in most cases you usually find that um, the test that you will take in the later steps has a lot of content that is surrounded by the rules and regulations within the sporting um, code that you want to operate in. All right, but you're not only learning for the test, when learning the rules and regulations for the sport that you want to operate in, it will actually count in your favor because then you will know what to do and what not to do. Okay, and this will become extremely crucial because if you step over the line or you do something that's not deemed appropriate under the rules and regulations of your sporting federation, then as an agent, you could be penalized. And even worse, if you become a repeat offender, your agent's license might be revoked as well. You know, so that's how important it is to know the rules and regulations. And I mean, these are rules and regulations that could be surrounding topics such as players, international transfer, meaning players that are able to transfer and go play under a different sporting federation in another country. This could involve domestic player transfers. This could also involve um, contractual negotiations. How many parties as an agent you're allowed to represent in a contract negotiation, all right? These are important points that you should know as an agent so that you never, ever, ever find yourself on the wrong side of the law within the sporting industry, all right? This is to make sure that you don't violate any rules and regulations. So that's why it's important to make sure that you do read the rules and regulations of the sporting federation. Step number four, contact the sporting federation about the application procedure all right most of the time they will have the email address or the number that you can call to find out about the application process and the procedure all right make sure you get in touch so you can get the vast information step number five receive and study the material to take to the exam all right. Now, the agent's exam will contain the rules and regulations, but it will also contain additional information as well that you as an agent should be able to know about the sporting federation and about the sporting codes, etc. All right. And in most cases, if the sporting federation doesn't send you these materials, you'll be able to download them from their website. All right. And this is the stuff that you need to make sure that you study. Study like you've never studied before. Step number six. Attend the agent's conference and the interview. All right. After applying and the, um, the Sporting Federation has vetted and done their due diligence and background checks on you, you will be invited to attend an agent's conference 
and an interview with the Federation so that they get to know you and get to know your history. Um, if you were an athlete, you don't have to have been an athlete. This is just for them to get to know you as the person, as the agent that will be operating. All right. And then after doing the interview, you will then write the exam, which will lead us to step number seven. This is when you have to write the exam. An exam venue will be provided to you after the interview. And this is when you will write the exam and you should pass the exam. If you've studied hard, then you should pass the exam. The exam content or the exam itself is never made difficult to the point where they want people to fail all right all the information that is on there is the information that is provided in the rules and regulations and additional study material so if you study hard you will pass the exam and upon passing the exam you will then be required to pay the agent's license fee all right so after passing the exam you will be given a time frame in most cases, most sporting federations will set a um, 90 day window to give you a chance as the new agent to pay the license fee. Failure to do so will make the agent's license null and void, which means you will have to begin the process all over again. All right, so make sure that you budget well. The prices differ according to sporting federations. I know for FIFA, um, the price for the agent's license fee on a yearly basis, you pay about 600 francs. So which is about, around about maybe 500 euros or so. With the Basketball Federation, which is FIBA, you pay an amount of about 1,000 francs, which is around about maybe 800, 900 euros. So it differs. Make sure you do all this information while doing your research so that you know the amount that you have to pay so that you can set your budget, all right? But it's crucial that you make the payment in time. And, that, and then which will lead us to step number eight, which is the final step. And that once the process ha has been fulfilled and you've passed the exam and you've paid your agent's license fee, you can now begin operating as a sports agent in your sporting code. All right. And when operating as an agent, you have two choices. You can either join an established agency and work under somebody, or you can take a chance on yourself and open up your own shop and you can start recruiting your own clients. The choice is yours. And that brings us to the end of chapter one.